do the price breakdown and demonstration of the materials included in the May uh, sketch box, basic box. So let's go over the prices. I did this a couple of different ways. Uh, when MSRP is available through the official website, I go with that. Otherwise, I pick a smaller boutique sort of online store like Paper and Ink Arts to pick my prices from. And then I go for a site that most artists would frequent if they didn't have um, a, a loyalty to a particular site like Dick Blick or Amazon. So um, the pearlescent ink is $6 on Paper and Ink Arts, which is a calligraphy arts website, or $4.59 on Dick Blick. The Pentel brush is $8.39 on the Pentel site, or $6.19 on Dick Blick. The five pack of Princeton White Tacalon brushes, these are synthetic brushes, was $9.50 on the Princeton site or $4.89 on Dick Blick. And um, so our totals are $19.28 on the high end uh, using MSRP or $15.67 using common artist resources like, um, again, Dick Blick. So um, you pay $25 for the basic bus box plus $5 shipping. So that would mean we really, really want to see these numbers higher. Um, a $5 discrepancy, you can buy things for five, you can buy a couple of things for $5 depending on um, the materials you're including. Um, so uh, it was kind of disappointing to see that Sketchbox still hasn't hit the mark with the basic box, but we're gonna go ahead and start demonstrating. And I have a few different papers. So we're gonna start with unpackaging the real value brushes. And they come in a non-reusable plastic sleeve. I mean, I guess you could reuse it, but it's very thin plastic that has adhesive at the top. Inside of that, there is an envelope that lists the types of uh, brushes inside. Getting a quick photo for the blog. And they're held in place with tape and glue. So you have to pop them out of their sleeve. And this last one seriously wants to, yeah, value. Will I be able to get this hunk of glue off of my brush? Uh, quite possibly no. Fantastic. So these are synthetic brushes, which makes them pretty ideal to use with acrylic inks. And this acrylic ink needs to be shaken because it will separate out. And the brushes included are a number one round, so it's a fairly small round. It came with a protective cap. In fact, the two rounds both came with protective caps. So a number one round, a number four round here, and they're round because they're called rounds because they're literally round. Um, a three eighths of an inch angle shader. Is that you? You look like it. Yeah. And it's called an angle shader because it's cut at an angle. Um, a number four shader, that's number eight, this is number four shader, and a number eight shader. And these all still have the, um, like the stiffen, like the glue that keeps these stiff for safe packaging. So they're going to need to be washed before first use. And I will put packaging in the box. Next we have the Pintel Arts Color Brush and it has instructions for getting it going on the back. And these are water-based dye, um, whoa, okay, dye ink brushes. And they are usually not waterproof once dry. So after we remove the red ring and re-thread the cap, we need to hold it inverted and squeeze so that the black, uh, I almost said black ink, but the black paint, black dye stuff can reach the tip. And I'm going to let this sit upside down so that it can reach.
And lastly, we have the pearlescent uh, liquid acrylic, and this is going to be waterproof once dry. It comes with a glass dropper inside the bottle, which is really very nice. And this is moon violet. So I'm going to, let's see, let's test. Yes, okay. So this has moved all the way. I'm going to use this glass of clean water to quickly remove the sizing out of my brushes. Really doesn't take a whole lot. And you want to use cold water when you're cleaning brushes because hot water will dissolve the glue that holds the bristles in the ferrule. All right, let me grab a paper towel because I know I'm gonna need one. And I have several papers to experiment on because Sketchbox doesn't really include paper or substrate in either of their tiers. So we're gonna start with some Strathmore cold press watercolor paper. And the card recommends, it was a little awkward by calling it free flowing, um, but the card really recommends that you don't really bother trying to layer your acrylic ink, that it works best if you just loosely apply it. So this is how it looks straight out, and this is how it looks watercolor. I mean, uh, when you add water to it, you can use it as sort of a watercolor wash. And it's a beautiful color, honestly. There's um, a mixture of different uh, iridescent flakes inside of the ink itself. Now, with the I've used the pearl for a while, pearl being over here. It's like, yeah, white pearl. And it pretty much only has one color, a flex inside of it. But the purple has blue and a little bit of green and maybe some pink. It's hard to tell. More, more blue than pink for sure. Um, and these brushes are fine so far, especially if you're not really trying to do something that's nuanced. But let's use a little brush. And I will adjust my camera. Let's use the little brush now to just draw something simple like a heart. And I don't usually use a lot of synthetics in my studio, but I do use them for specific applications like painting with acrylic here or um, applying something that has a heavier body like um, Copic Opaque White or um, gouache. So even though I don't, I don't personally prefer synthetics, they do definitely have uses. And they do tend to be a lot cheaper than natural hair brushes. So if you're just starting out, they can be a really good way to get started. Now this is the Pinto Color Arts. I'm trying to get this brush started. And on watercolor paper, it is very prone to dry brushing. And I know many of my fellow comic artist friends enjoy dry brushing and they think that is a look they want. So if you are such an artist and you want dry brush in your sketchbook, I highly recommend you go ahead and you get a watercolor or a mixed media sketchbook, something with tooth. And I added a little bit of water and it can be blended out as a black ink wash. And I'm going to apply some, let it dry for 24 hours, and then we'll come back to it and see if it is still water soluble. So that was my demonstration of the materials included in my May Sketchbox Basic Box. I hope you guys found this video informative and useful. Um, if you're considering buying Sketchbox, I hope this video helped you in your decision one way or the other. Um, 
I have a Sketchbox challenge video coming up, so please do keep checking the channel for that. And um, I also have a premium box demonstration for this month uh, that I recommend you check out. And I have an Art Snacks coming in, and I'm going to be doing uh, the same thing with that. And uh, if you haven't yet, please take a moment to check out my Art Snacks versus Sketchbox um, playlist. I have been reviewing these boxes consistently since January. And in the past, I did used to review Art Snacks boxes. So I have a little bit of a history with reviewing subscription boxes. Um, for the full review, including my verdict, please check out my blog, Natto Soup, not, Natto Soup, N -A -T -T -O -S -O -U -P, at blogspot.com for more information. I hope you guys have a great day. I'd like to say a quick thank you to my patrons for making videos like this possible. It is through your generosity that I am able to afford to do this. So thank you guys very much. Um, I will see you guys with the